just took front desk, pick up the phone, uh, and secretary. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to be the best damn secretary that this place has ever had. Uh, nonprofit is a tax status, not a business strategy. Yeah. It meant that it doesn't mean that just because you're a nonprofit that you can't have that entrepreneurial spirit. Take advantage of your tax status, not right. say and use it as right. a hindrance that you right, can't right. make money, quote yeah. unquote. <laughs> Hi hey everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Chris Channer. We are on the Carepreneur Show and we got a special guest here in the house. We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ignite Conference and we have Dominic Manfredo from, he's the, from secretary to CEO. He is the CEO of the community at Sunset Wood. And I, man, look at that. I got him yeah, all right. Did man. It. Yeah, yeah. It was I was like, I butchered him for yep. like three times, but I got him all right when it counted, you yep. know? So, uh, that's right. Anyways, I, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, introduce, you know, Dominic here. We, uh, came to the Ignite conference. He is going to be sharing his journey, his story, how he started, you know, at, 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 the, at a young age and became the CEO of a, you know, assisted living, independent living, independent living, yep. um, community. And, and, you know, like what his plans are for the future, yeah, what that yeah. journey has looked like and how he's making a difference in people's lives. Uh, but he's got that entrepreneurial spirit. He's got that hunger, that passion. So, uh, Dominic, tell us the story, man. Where did yeah, it all, thanks. where did it start, man? Yeah. How, how did this journey begin? Thanks for having me on. I'm honored to be here and be in Nashville with you. It was yeah, a great awesome, event. Man. So, uh, um, but yeah, um, senior living kind of came to me, uh, out of nowhere. And, um, I went to college, didn't know what I was going to do. Went to pre-med. Um, didn't like it, transferred out, came yeah. back for business. Uh, day of graduation, I had the hustle and I said, yeah. I want to go make money. And a friend of mine was doing traveling car sales. Yeah. So we had to actually. The, what, the, what, what does that mean? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone's gotten this. Like yeah. the uh, flyers in the mail that yeah. says you won something, come ah. into the dealership. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, us. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So we would travel, yeah. we would set up shop at different dealerships. Ah. And the people and would come in with where, flyers. Like, all the tents are. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the big sale, big yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in with your flyers. Like and everything's and, discounted. Everything yeah, yeah. Just so everyone knows everyone wins on those sales yeah, yeah. like everyone's a winner we yeah. want to get you in just so that we could try and sell you a car so right, right. i would travel the east coast i lived in wisconsin i lived in charlotte i lived wow. in tampa for a bit and um hustled made great money everything was great but sales and, and that kind of sales yeah. being that type of person selling used cars it, it wears you down sure. so uh yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i decided i mean there's a lot of hustle and you're moving it is hustling it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'd uh we'd work all day long and then we'd get in the car right at night 9 p.m and we would drive 12 hours to the next sale and it's then like we wake up the them. next day wow. and start it over that's every crazy. week that's different crazy. place so wow it was so, um so that's, it was interesting too so then like as a salesperson like yep. you're, you're, you're kind of like are you working with the salespeople from that dealership or yeah kind of it's like competition but not so yeah. they look at us as competition but uh at the end of the day we're all working together to try and make the dealership more money that's why yeah. they bring us in that's they call us the sharks yeah, so yeah, when we'd yeah. go in we would be the sharks then they'd be like yeah here we go here's the fly by yeah. nighters in town see i love these stories because like, like when you think about like that journey and then it's like here you are now taking care of seniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's crazy it's like, because how did that how did that bridge happen? And that sales thing, it was the best thing that I learned from that because these are high level salespeople. Yeah. So they're teaching you the art of the deal, how to present right. yourself, how right. to gain people's trust, um, but and, in and a genuine that, way. That, you know, one hundred percent. I mean, at, at that level, you're like actually being educated on the sales yeah. process. You know? yep. Yeah. 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 And, um, that, that quickly burnt me out though. Right. Cause, uh, you know, in that, uh, industry, they weren't that genuine. So I right. said, you know, this isn't what I want to do. So what I want to do is come home. So came home, it was kind of in the recession and, uh, it, I came home 2013. Okay. So it was like a rate right gotcha, when yeah. it was coming to the end and, um, there was no jobs. So couldn't find anything. I put out 30 applications, uh, you know, a week, got wow. no interviews, got nothing. Wow. So, wow. um, all over the nation, I was trying as best as I could. But so I took, ended up taking a job. I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to take the first job that I can get. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is just be the best at that. So yeah. I took a job as a secretary at an employee benefits uh, company that was a part of a bank. And uh, they did um, the financials and they did uh, regular employee benefits insurances. And uh, I just took front desk, pick up the phone. Uh, and secretary. Yeah. Wow. And so I said, but you know what? I'm going to be the best damn secretary that this place has ever had. It's awesome. So um, I love that intentionality, bro. Yeah. And you know, it was a huge pick. I went from making great money to making minimum wage. Yeah, and, yeah. um, you know, but I set, just set my mind that I need to get in a routine. I need to get back on track. And, uh, you know, I was there for a while and they, they loved me. I moved on to being, um, a vice president of a wellness company. So I like made a huge 
jump. Just jump yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, they took my sales experience from before. I went and I was in a wellness company, and yeah. I actually did uh, corporate wellness for yeah. a lot of large companies uh, yeah. with a, a doctor partner, and uh, it was fun. We, we right. taught people how to be healthy, how to live healthy, which right. kind of translated into my next role, which I was looking out, and I was like, okay, like I love this wellness thing, but uh, I want to be able to get into something that's a little bit longer lasting, a little bit um, more established. So I found right. this job, and it was a uh, director of uh, – director of marketing and operations at uh, the community at Sunset Wood. So, wow. Um, wow. I, and what year is this? This was in 2015 when the job came up. Okay. So I was only home for, uh, you know, a couple of years when this opportunity came. And uh, I applied for it because I knew that I had the skill set and I was good at marketing and uh, I had a lot of contacts in the area. So I was like, you know what? I I'm going to try and go for it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I put in my application. I go to call my references and um, I call uh, two references and I said, hey, you know, I'm applying for a new job. And uh, it's actually the people I work for, a secretary. And uh, wh when I called them and I said, hey, I'm looking for this yeah. job as uh, director of operations for senior living community. They said, where? Right. And I said, Sunset Wood. And they said, Dom, you won't believe it. We're on the board of directors well, for that. That's and crazy. We should have thought like, of you before. Yeah, you were yeah. the best damn secretary we ever had. Right, right, and, right. you know, uh, and now we've known you. We've seen you grow in this like wellness space. intervention, man. Yeah, like, that's what I always yeah, say. Yeah. I always say. So started off there and uh, just hopped right in and loved the job, loved what I was doing. So fulfilling, uh, serving seniors, um, getting to know how they live and how they can flourish uh, given the right possibilities. My right. wellness background paired really well uh, moving into senior living because I surrounded everything with wellness. So right, that was right. our big concentration um, and ended up, uh, you know, working my way up to being uh, executive director and CEO of the company. That's awesome, so, man. Yeah. Yeah, so, so like when, when, when you started out in that, um, in that initial role, I mean, like, you know, you know what, what, what did you have plans to you know, kind of you know, move up to that CEO position originally or were you like, I mean, did you kind of know what you wanted to do or because I, I feel like this whole thing is new to you, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So it was uh, actually a test. The board said to me, you know, your first year is going to be a test. Either yeah. you're going to pass it or you're going right. to fail it. Yeah, yeah. And the first year you're going to do your best in this position of strictly marketing. If we think that you're the right person to eventually take over because yeah. the previous exec was uh, going to be retiring and had a plan to, then uh, we'll go into that succession planning and you'll be the person that we can com commit to yeah. uh, taking our place. So first year uh, we went in and I wanted to rebrand the whole community. So uh, we kind of changed the way that we were talking about the people, talking about the, the units uh, instead yeah. of calling them apartments. We said, you know, it's more like a resort. Let's call them suites and let's call them penthouses uh, and uh, get the yeah. community a little bit more higher end. We were really great, and the community even said that when I came in. They were really great at doing the job, yeah. but they never talked about how great they were. So a lot of people in the community didn't really know them. Yeah, so yeah. my goal was to get the word out right. and uh, changed our whole marketing plan and rebranded a lot of what we were doing and uh, brought in a lot of wellness programs. And after that first year, they said, Dom, you know, we want you to awesome. be able to yeah. work on taking over. What, so What was it like to be working around and with like the, the elderly population or with seniors? You know, it was, it was crazy because coming in, I was 25 five years old and uh when when you think about seniors at that age and you never worked with them before you don't know how to act around them at first right, right, right. so you're kind of a little timid what do i do i have this uh this kind of memory in the back of my mind of seniors aren't able to you know do as much as they used right. to i got to be gentle with them and then right. what i come to find out they are exactly like right, right. everyone else right. you just treat they them exactly the same yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you gotta cut them jokes. off when they're like, drinking yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah but yeah, yeah they crack yeah. jokes and all you got to do is treat them yeah. exactly how yeah. you would treat your friends yeah. and they give it back and they, awesome, they become man. your friends they I, become and that's so what i always love with my grandma like i used to always just like joke with her you know yeah, yeah. Like, just like you know we kind of poke fun at each other and yep. it's like our little special way of just like communicating and like having fun absolutely and, uh, and like you know i got those like old notes that you know we had written back and forth to each other kind of always poking fun at something yep. and like but it was just you know it brought so much like you know like excitement and um just you know a lot of fun to just you know hanging out with grandma and grandpa you know yep, so, exactly yeah. my grandma because i worked in this industry i was the only person that she would actually like talk to right. realistically she'd yeah, yeah. you know be soft around my mom and my uncle and not tell them everything but when i would come over she's like dom here's everything and she'd yeah. lay it all out That's so awesome, she felt That's like awesome. she could be herself because i treated yeah. her like that you know 100%. um didn't look at anyone like they're they're any uh different because they might not physically be able to do something or maybe mentally cognitively um you just got to treat everyone the same and they naturally 
uh, uh, reciprocate it. So. As as like you know, as a CEO in, in this role, I mean, what what does like day to day look like for you? Um, you know, and, and you know, how big of a team are you leading and things like that? Yeah, so I like to be hands on. Um, we have a, a team of twenty five, so okay. um, it's a decent size. We have sixty six units, strictly independent living, Sweet. a lot of aging. Uh, suites or units? Oh yeah, yeah the, suites and penthouses. <laughs> so, so we Just have uh, forty two yeah, suites yeah, yeah, yeah. and twenty four penthouses. There you go. Um, but uh, you know, day to day, um, obviously, I'm thinking of the high end stuff, uh, yeah. the the strategic plan. Throughout COVID, I, I became CEO on January first of twenty. So wow. I went Dude, into so like, the COVID. It was like, wow. It was like, yeah. a, you know, talk about the timing on that. Yep. Like, yep. That's, a, that's like the true CEO test. Right yeah. There, you know? and, and it's funny because, you know, I don't even until recently, I didn't even know what it was like to actually do what a normal CEO does because we were so busy just trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just trying yeah, to I figure know. out COVID. I, um, I, I remember s sitting there like watching the TV for like three days straight. Yes, like, yes. Like just in like in a state of paralysis. Like, yep. what the heck do we do? Like, I know. Well, yeah. I don't know what to believe. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah, like, trying like, to gather all the like, information and then explain it to the yeah, uh, yeah. to the people yeah. that we're serving. Um, and that was one thing I really concentrated on right immediately was uh, getting credibility. And yeah. uh, we were talking uh, earlier, you and I, about, you know, I said that it's hard to say, but for me, COVID was a, a great thing because I was able to get credibility uh, instantly from doing the right thing and keeping everyone safe sure. and, um, and communicating well with them. Right. Handing out a newsletter every single day, talking about what is the CDC saying, what's the federal government saying, right. what's the state saying, what's right. the county saying. Yeah. Here's all what you need to know as a senior citizen in our community. Don't yeah. get all lost in all the other information because there's so much information right, out right. there so like, you might not know. And the problem is like the CDC might have like, guidance for all of these different types of services like yeah, know, yeah schools yeah. and this and kids and yep. you know so yeah just consolidating that giving them just kind of like okay this is all like around you know this particular you know group of people yeah. this is what you guys need to focus on yep you know? and trying to go through the weeds and giving it to them and you know uh, how, how was this for your team did you guys go into lockdown or how was that yeah, so right in the beginning, New York State closed down everything. So yeah. uh, we actually had rotating shifts. People were coming in a couple of days at a time. Another person on the team, the other half of the team was coming in. Right. Uh, the other half of the time we went from usually we're a Monday through Friday place, except for uh, the dining services is gotcha. obviously seven days a week. But people were working throughout the weekends. They were working on orthodox shifts. And um, but uh, the team just rallied right behind everything and just said, you know what, we're going to be, you know, uh, we're going to be – there for all these tenants whether i no normally don't come in on the weekends i'm going to come in on the weekends i'm going to make sure that i'm taking care of these people and that they're safe so right. the team just rallied behind it and, and truthfully i couldn't have done it without them i have a awesome. really strong team probably yeah, the strongest yeah. that we've ever had so that's awesome man and, and what do you think like what is it like for you like when you think about leading that team successfully like what is important to you i mean like um you know like when you think about leadership and, and those skill sets i think uh trust is a huge piece and yeah. uh knowing that whatever decision is coming out of me that they they could trust where it's coming from but also i'm the type of leader that i say i don't know everything in the world you right. know there's a lot of things i don't know yeah. about so i use them as the experts as well i right. would get them together either via zoom phone call or in person when we were able to right. and say hey what do you think right. you know right. I, I don't want to be the person just shouting out orders and having to be the wrong thing because it might not work out for the department sure. or uh, with their staff and they might be dealing with different things than I am and I might not be able to see it. So uh, being able to work together collaboratively. So when you, when you, when you think about like then like as a CEO, because you're kind of driving like that vision for the future, like yep. what, what, what does that future look like for the community at Sunset Wood? Yeah. So now that we're ramping down a lot of the COVID things, I've been finally been able for the past couple the months focus on focusing, on, yeah, on, on, on the future, yeah, 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 stuff yeah. that I've been wanting to and a uh, re big reason why I, I wanted to come to this event. So uh, for us, we are already serving like the middle market um, for a one bedroom with dinner included, weekly housekeeping, uh, water, trash, cable, yeah. Wi-Fi. We're about 1500 bucks a month. So right. really affordable. Yeah. Then our two bedrooms Shoot, about 2500 Yeah, so there's, there's, there's people in like, like back in Florida, like yep. some of our staff that would love that. You yeah, know? yeah. Bucks a month. yeah. So yeah. what we want to do is continue that uh, that model, but um, maybe even on more of an active adult end and then being able to pair some of what we do, kind of test it out in our local area to see if we can help support an active adult community, maybe do some inner uh, uh, some uh, mixed income. So a partner with someone who maybe does affordable housing, bring in us who is more middle income and right. mix those two incomes too. Uh, you know, just as we're, we've in, been known to as a society in the past to segregate seniors, we also segregate those in different incomes. Right. So let's bring people together and say, we're working yeah. together for this. Yeah. Uh, the middle income. And, and be now does that help? Like, like, Cause I know you guys have a foundation then too. So yep. does that yep. help 
like offset some of those costs um, for you guys' operation? Then, so or? the foundation uh, was created years back, and it's to support a lot of uh, the tenants currently. So if someone's living with us, it's all private pay, and they're unable to afford rent, we collect their financials, and the foundation will support some portions of people's rent gotcha. as, a, um, you know, kind of a subsidy, but it's to keep them there longer. And it right. will actually cover some home care, too, from outside. So our big piece is aging in place yeah. and making sure that people are staying with us as long as they are they want to. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, and then it will be that foundation will be what uh, kind of supports the future too. Sure. And if, when you th when you think about like like then like this conference itself, like what inspired you to like attend this particular conference like here, you know, at, you know, ignite. Yeah, yeah. So I'm big into leading age. I do a lot of leading age. I yeah. sit on the, the retirement housing cabinet for New York State. And when I saw this come over, though, it just seemed different. You yeah. know, um, I wanted to collaborate with people. I wanted to talk to some other vendors in a little close knit situation. I liked how this was yeah. 200 people. You yeah. know, I said, oh, man, I can get to know people. And then when we see right. each other, yeah, I can yeah. see you later on in the day. Yeah. Um, so it was different. And I wanted to be thinking very high level and creatively and within myself and sure. kind of uh, see maybe this could be the spark that gets me an idea to move into the future now that we're talking about yeah, some of those cool that's, things. That's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. It, you know, it's, it's exciting, you know, seeing younger people being involved yeah. in this field, uh, having a passion for it, wanting to make change, wanting to make differences. Um, you know, do you, do you have someone that you follow, like, like a, like a, an individual mentor that is kind of like your guiding light, you know, at all or? Yeah. So in the past, um, it was obviously, uh, the previous CEO, yeah. uh, Reverend Carol Jubinville. She was wonderful and she was in the business for 27 years. Right. And what she taught me was just how to treat people yeah, and yeah. how to respect them and how to make sure that you're fulfilling, uh, the, their last days. Cause a lot of the time we are the people that are supporting a lot of these seniors yeah. in their final days. So not only how do they live gracefully but how do they die with dignity as well so sure. she taught me so much and i'm very grateful for her i would not be here if it wasn't for her so wow. i'm very That's blessed awesome, and man. now that you know she's retired you know we still yeah. talk to each other all the time but now i gotta find that new mentor right, like right, you right, say right, you know right. how can i still grow well, what, what about in like the uh out like in the you know um you know in the world like on the youtube land or like are there people you know out there that like you know inspire you or kind of uh have provided like you know light or, you know, guidance as a entrepreneur, as a CEO. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm big into real estate on the side yeah. too. So, uh, I like obviously the Grant Cardone's, the Ryan yeah. Pineda's and all, all those people who are, um, and Gary Vayn Vaynerchuk yep. and, yep. uh, you know, all those staple people, because, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes you wake up and I'm sure you know this, you, you, you don't have energy all the time and it's right. kind of like, how do I get that spark? You need something. Yeah. And then yeah. when you, when you look at a quick, uh, video on Instagram oh, since, or TikTok yeah. or whatever, and it's just a quick note of like, keep pushing, don't yeah. stop. And yeah. from some of these influencers, you know, they're, they're very, very successful people, but you know, it, it's true for all of us. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. You can't stop. You have to keep pushing, just yeah. take it day by day and keep taking that step. Keep, keep making changes, keep yep. pushing forward keep focusing on the future. Absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And not every day is going to be great, but at yeah. the same point, just try and make the next day better or uh, figure out a way to uh, make that situation better. You, do you have a favorite, Learn. you have a favorite like teaching a favorite quote that you uh, like to share with people at all or like, uh, well, in nonprofit world, there's actually a local uh, a local CEO and another nonprofit back at home who said a great thing, uh, and it is that uh, nonprofit is a tax status, not a business strategy. For uh, me, that meant yeah. a lot because yeah. it meant that it doesn't mean that just because you're a nonprofit that you can't have that entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, you can look at different ways of doing things and take advantage of your tax status, not right. say and use it as right. a hindrance that right, you can't right. make money, quote yeah. unquote, but yeah. um, you can actually use it to your advantage to further your mission of taking care of seniors. Sure. And that's something that's helped guide me to say, I don't need to fit in this box of what nonprofits always have been. Um, right. We could do a lot more. And maybe, yeah. you know, I know uh, some nonprofits buy up shopping malls, but then they bring in their uh, their services to that. So right. it's a real estate piece, but they're also further in their mission. So yeah, I well, love and that. I, and I love that because I, I feel like when you have like a foundation, you have, you have like a, uh, you know, a pot to, to kind of help continue keeping things, you know, um, you know, you know, running smoothly or to keep yep. the piece of real estate, like, you know, properly maintained in Absolutely. case there's, you know, some sort of adverse event, you know, and it's like, sometimes people don't have those security blankets or if they do, they got to go rely on debt. And then it's yes. like, you know, that's, you know, can be super toxic if, if it's, you know, if it's unsustainable, you know, so. absolutely. You got to have a plan for all yeah, of it. And, yeah. uh, we've been blessed with this foundation and, uh, our organization actually goes back 
this February will be 140 years. That's insane, brother. Yeah, That's insane. it is. Like the building's not 140 years. Uh, no, old. No, no. Yeah. The, the old building got <laughs> torn down yeah. in 1974. It was yeah. a third. We were on the third floor of a hospital. Yeah, then yeah. the hospital merged, and they they sold off land, tore it down. Yeah. Then we moved over in 1984, built on an extension in yeah. 03. But the organization, I feel so proud that I'm able to be the CEO of an organization that's 140 years old. That's awesome. It man. means yeah, that you know yeah. so many people have touched that foundation, right. touched. I've been a part of it. Have yeah. Been, you know, influential in it, have like supported it, believed yeah. in it. Yeah, it's awesome. Going back in the records like, and seeing like what it's, they it's, did. It's, it's, it's rare for someone like that to last that long. You know? Absolutely. So, it yeah. really is. And, you know, I'm just proud to be a part of it and continue that mission and then yeah. look to grow it in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, um, like, like you know, five, ten-year vision. Do you have a uh, five, ten-year vision for like what you think that future would look like for you? Absolutely. Or? It's going to be helping to serve the middle market, trying to build another building, whether yeah. it be an expansion on ours or there's actually some properties around us. Right. I want to test the water with doing like an active adult. No nonprofits are an active adult that I even know of. So right. I want to be that first person to say, hey, nonprofits can do active adult. It can be yeah. surrounded by wellness. It can be surrounded by programs. doesn't mean that we have to take care of them but we can create that relationship with them. Yeah. So in the future, when they might need a little bit more help, being meals and housekeeping like my IL provides, right, right. then we can go and, and talk about maybe bringing them in there. I think we need to bring it back a little bit, um, and especially in our area. There's not many normal senior housing in our area. Right, right. That's awesome, man. I love your story, brother. You're 31, yeah, I believe, 31. right? You said so. It's, it's awesome seeing younger people like yourself in this industry. And, it, and my hope is that it inspires other people you know, out there in the, uh, the world you know, that, hey, it doesn't matter what age you might be like, you know, you know, you can still like make a difference in people's lives, whether you're 25 or whether you're 30. And, you know, you can make that difference in the senior care space and Absolutely. you can bridge the kind of the, you know, like, you know, the, the entrepreneurial itch, you yeah. know, and, yep. and then you know, actually taking care of people and making a difference in people's lives, you know, so. It's awesome. It's, it's, well, it's so much fun. You yeah. deal with different stuff every day, as you know. It's exciting. Uh, man. I recommend it to any young person. Yeah, because you're, you're, you know, you're making a difference, you know, and you're, um, you got, you can, you can satisfy the entrepreneurial spirit. Absolutely. You know? So, uh, Love it. If, if, you know, we'll make sure we uh, include your contact information, you know, in the description below. If you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, the Carepreneur Show. We love sharing other entrepreneurs' journey in the senior care industry. Uh, and so thank you for being here today. Thank and, you, Chris. Uh, I appreciate your time, brother. Appreciate it. Have a good one, guys. Yes, you too.